OK, so the next part of this chapter is about thinking about how simultaneous equations can be represented on graphs. It will start off with some things that feel familiar from GCSE, but there really is quite a lot of new stuff here. So you need to make sure you pay attention for these. So I've written here that the point on a graph that satisfies two equations, I should say two equations simultaneously, is the point of intersection. So I'm going to have a look at this one that's been drawn in red, x plus y equals 5, and the blue one, which is 2x plus 1. And this black dot that I've drawn here is going to hopefully be the solution to these pair of simultaneous equations. So you've got a choice of elimination or substitution. I think substitution is going to be the best method here because we already have y as the subject. So I'm going to take that first one, which is x plus y equals 5, and I'm going to replace the y with a 2x plus 1. So I have here 3x plus 1 equals 5. So 3x is equal to 4 and x is equal to 4 thirds. Now because I want to find out what y is, I can just use the fact that y is equal to 2x plus 1. So I can do 2 multiplied by x plus 1 which is 8 thirds plus 1 and 8 thirds plus 1 is 8 thirds plus 3 thirds which is 11 thirds. So we've got this solution pair here, which is x is 4 thirds and y is 11 thirds. And if you think about that as a coordinate, you would have the x coordinate and the y coordinate. Now remember, 4 thirds is going to be roughly 1.33, and 11 thirds is going to be roughly 3.66. So let's just see if that actually works. So we've got the, the x coordinate, yeah, that does look like it's going to be 4 thirds, and the y coordinate, yeah, that does look like it's 3.66 or 11 thirds that we've got here. So it makes sense that the coordinate where they both cross over is where they have the same x and y value, which makes both of the equations true. But this is where things get a bit more A-level. So it says here, on the same axes, draw the graphs of 2x plus y equals 3 and y equals x squared minus 3x plus 1. So I've already drawn those for us to save us a bit of time, but you would need to use your skills of drawing quadratics from the previous chapter. And all it says to begin with is use your graph to write down, that doesn't mean work out, it just says literally write down the solutions to the simultaneous equations. Well, it's where they cross over. So one of the places where they're going to cross over is here, and this has a coordinate of 2 minus 1. The other place where they cross over is here, which has the coordinates of minus 1, 5. So we should just be able to say that the solutions are going to be when x is equal to 2, y is equal to minus 1. That comes from the coordinate that's down in the bottom right. The other pair is that when x is equal to minus 1, y is equal to 5. So we've just come up with the solutions straight away that there are two. And then it says, what algebraic method, perhaps thinking about the previous chapter, could we have used to show the graphs would have intersected twice? Because we didn't know for sure that they were going to intersect twice. We could have had that the blue line was down somewhere like this, or we could have even had that the blue line was just going to be intersecting it at one place, but it did intersect twice. Now, you've probably spotted it in the title. The clue is going to be using the discriminant here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start solving these simultaneous equations that I have. I'm going to start solving them algebraically. And then at a particular point, we're going to use simultaneous equations. Now, I think I already have what y is. So I'm going to take this y part of the equation here and I'm going to substitute it where y is. OK, you could do it the other way around. You could make x the subject and substitute in. But I think this is going to be the easiest version. So I have 2x plus y equals 3, but I'm going to replace y now. So I have 2x plus x squared minus 3x plus 1, and that is equal to 3. So this, when I simplify, is going to be x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. Now this is where people get a bit confused, because this quadratic, this isn't this one here. This is not this quadratic. This is the quadratic. So we need to think about what this quadratic here actually represents. I'm going to just highlight this so I can talk about this. So this quadratic, this quadratic represents the x solutions of the simultaneous equation i.e. 
where they intersect. So this quadratic isn't the, the red quadratic. This quadratic that we have combined is both of them combined. It is a combination of both. It is a combination of both the original equations. And because I think they're going to cross twice, because I've got those two black x's, I'm going to do the discriminant on this. So I'm going to have a look at its discriminant. Now, we know that the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. So in this case, a is 1, b is minus 1, and c is minus 2. So let's work out its b squared minus 4ac. So b is minus 1, so it'd be minus 1 squared, minus 4 multiplied by a, which is 1, multiplied by c, which is minus 2. So we get here, that's going to be 1 plus 8, which is 9. So here, we have got that b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, hence there are two intersections. Because remember, when b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, for a quadratic, it means that there are going to be two intersections. If it was less than 0, it would mean that there were no solutions, so it would either be like this or this. But what people get confused of is when I've drawn this little sketch down here, it's got nothing to do with the red one. It's actually to do with these solutions. The quadratic would actually be crossing here and here. It would be some kind of quadratic that looks like, whoops, some kind of quadratic that looks like this, where these x solutions are corresponding to those ones. So let's just recap what we did there. What you'll do is you will combine them together to get this yellow one, and then you will use the discriminant to show that there are two solutions because the discriminant is greater than zero. So let's try another one of these. This time it said, on the same axis, draw these two graphs, and I've saved us a bit of time by drawing these two graphs. And we can see that clearly these do not intersect. We can see there are no points where these graphs are going to intersect each other. And it says prove algebraically that the lines never meet. So step one, let's combine the equations. Okay, so luckily I've already got y as the subject of both of them, so I can just make them equal to each other. So I'm just going to say that 2x minus 2, that's my y, equals x squared plus 4x plus 1. Now it's a quadratic to combine these, so I'm going to subtract the 2x, and I'm also going to add the 2, and I'm going to come up with this. Now the second thing that I will do is I will use the discriminant. Remember that equation we've just worked out is like the combined version, discriminant. It's the combined version of both of them. So you, last time I highlighted it in yellow, I'll do the same thing. Now for the discriminant, a is 1, b is 2, and c is 3. So I'm going to work out what b squared minus 4ac is. And think to yourself, what do you think it will be? What kind of answer, considering that they don't meet each other? So b squared minus 4ac, well, it's going to be 2 squared minus 4 times a times c. So that's 4 minus 12, which is minus 8. Hence, hopefully you expected this, b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. So the lines will never meet. So the discriminant can be used as a tool to show that an equation doesn't have any solutions because they're not going to cross each other. So I would, if it ever says, you know, show that these two things don't happen, you must make sure that you use the discriminant to do this. So if b squared minus 4ac was greater than zero, then we know that the blue line would have been something like this, and it would be crossing it at two places. And if it was exactly equal to zero, it would only be crossing it at one place that we have here. They love these questions in the exams, so it's really important you know how to do this. This is the kind of question they like in the exams, where they're not actually, um, they've got some much trickier kinds of coefficients. So this one says the line with equation y equals 2x plus 1 meets the curve with equation kx squared plus 2y plus k minus 2 equals 0. And it says they meet at exactly one point. 
given that k is a positive constant, find the value of k and then the coordinates of the point of intersection. So first of all, when it says they meet at exactly one point, I'm hoping that you're being reminded that b squared minus 4ac, the discriminant, is going to be equal to zero. But the first thing I need to do is I need to combine my equations. And that will be using substitution. Okay. Well, I've already got y as the subject in this first one, which I'll highlight in green. So I'm going to place that inside here. So I get kx squared plus 2 lots of y, which is 2x plus 1, plus k minus 2 equals 0. I've just ignored the brackets around the k minus 2 because it's not that important at this point. So that's kx squared plus 4x plus 2 plus k minus 2 equals 0. So I've only got a kx squared. For x, I have 4x, and then the plus 2 and the minus 2 cancel out, and I just get k like this. So the second thing I'm now going to do is I will use the discriminant. I will use the fact that we know, use the fact that b squared minus 4ac equals 0, because there is one intersection. So our value of a is k, our value of b is 4, and our value of c is also k. So b squared would be 16 minus 4 times a times c, and that is equal to 0. So I've literally just used that b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. So 16 minus 4k squared equals 0. 16 equals 4k squared divide by 4, and so k is equal to plus or minus the square root of 4, which is plus or minus 2. But remember over here, k is a positive constant, so k must be equal to 2, because k is positive. And then it just says for this value of k, find the coordinates of this point of intersection. Well, I could go back to the beginning again, and I could replace k in this original equation with 2. Or I could actually go back to this, because remember, this was nearly the solutions to the equation. So I'm actually going to, for part b of the question, see if I can squeeze it in here. I'm going to use the blue part. So I would have 2x squared plus 4x plus 2 equals 0, and I'm going to use my equation solver. So I'm going to do 2, 4, and 2. We get that the solution, there's only one of them, which is great, is minus 1 for x. And we know that y is equal to 2x plus 1, so that's 2x plus 1. And y is equal to minus 2 plus 1, which is minus 1. So the solution is x equals minus 1 and y equals minus 1. It's great that the calculator only gave me this one solution here because it says that it actually goes exactly one point of intersection. So you can have a go at exercise 3c, but what you might like to do is have a look at an exam question with me first of all. So have a go at doing this question. It's a five marker. It is from the new spec, and then um, you can have a go at the next exercise. Okay, so we've been given a line of an equation here. 3x minus 2y equals k, and it says k is a real constant. It says, given that the line L intersects the curve with this equation at two distinct points, find the range of possible values of k. So if it's at two distinct points, we know that b squared minus 4ac is going to be greater than zero. And I already know what y is as the subject here, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to substitute it in there. So that is 3x minus 2, 2x squared minus 5 is equal to k. So that's my first step of doing the combining. So that's 3x minus 4x squared plus 10 equals k. So that's minus 4x squared plus 3x plus 10 minus k equals 0. Now I'm going to use the discriminant. 
And when I use the discriminant, I'm going to use the fact that b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0. So a is equal to minus 4, b is equal to 3, and c is actually both of those bits. c is 10 minus k. So I'm going to zoom in so I've got a little bit more space. So b squared, that's going to be 9 minus 4 times a times c is greater than 0. So that is going to be 9. Let's just take this a little bit slower. Minus 4 times minus 4 is a plus 16. So it's plus 16 multiplied by this. So that's 9 plus 160 minus 16k is greater than 0. So 169 is greater than 16k. So 169 over 16k has to be less than that. And that's good because it wanted a range of possible values for k. So the answer is that k is less than 169 over 16. Let's just confirm that. Yeah, we've got that k is less than 169 over 16. And we've got the combined quadratic that we had here as well. Okay, have a go at exercise 3c and see how that goes.